What's up, hobby friends, and welcome to the video tutorial on how to paint Marble Crisis Protocol's Quicksilver. I've got up on the screen all of the colors and paints I used to paint this miniature. So if you want to give the video a pause and copy those down, we can then dive right on in. I've also used some posters on the base. I'll have a link to the Google Drive where you can download the PDF in the video description below. To prep our Quicksilver figure, build it as normal. There is some gap filling you don't want to pay attention to on the sides of the torso and then where the two legs and the torso are actually attached together. There is a seam that runs down the middle of the buttocks and then up the left side and then on both sides of the torso. So I've used Milliput to fill this. You can use Voleo Plastic Putty, green stuff, brown stuff. I prefer Milliput because it's very soft, malleable when you're working with it. And then when it cures, you can carve and sand it very easily. The actual Quicksilver itself, he's fairly front heavy and he's got a really crazy forward motion. And I feel like there needs to be some balance in the back. So once we complete the model, I know what I want to do afterwards is go in with some posters and some newspapers and just create a billy motion behind. I've painted this model before as a commission and I did the same thing for my client. I was really happy with how it turned out. So I'll do the exact same for this figure. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll prime the figure with Vallejo Surface Primer Black. I'll do some quick airbrushing. I'll paint the base off camera and then we'll dive into painting the smoke effect and then the Quicksilver figure itself. I'm going to start with some AK Graphite and I'm going to airbrush a base coat onto all of the base stones as well as the explosion on the base. From there, I'm going to start airbrushing some yellow onto the explosion. So you can see that I've masked off all of the gray on the stone. And what I'm looking to do is get a nice solid base coat onto all of the explosion. From there, I'm gonna do a few zenithal highlights going backwards. So I'm gonna take some of volcanic yellow, which is slightly darker and a little bit more on the orange side. And I'm gonna spray from the top direction. The goal is to capture this color into the top highlights and leave the yellow in the undertones. I'll follow that up with another zenithal highlight of orange red. Again, I'm looking at the tops of the little explosion effects and we're applying a zenithal highlight, but the overall effect is to have the shadows in the highlights and the highlights in the shadows. From there, I'm gonna go back in with some pure yellow and I'm gonna start applying some highlights into the deepest recesses of the explosion. The goal here is to give the effect that it's glowing and bright hot underneath. And as I work my way up through the explosion, I'll focus more and more on those deep recesses and fade the color out. I'll do the same thing with AKP yellow, targeting the bottommost parts of the explosion where the hottest parts of the fire are going to be. From there, I'm going to airbrush a base coat of light Prussian blue over Quicksilver. You can see that I've used a combination of painter's tape and some blue tack to mask off the base. From there, I'll go in with a quarter turquoise and apply a zenithal highlight over the suit. You want to make sure that you're spraying from directly where the highlights are coming from to preserve the light Prussian blue in the mid and shadow tones. From there, I'm going go with a quarter turquoise by hand and I'm going to touch up the highlights. My goal here is to solidify the midtones and give myself a nice solid base coat to then continue highlighting from. What I find is that airbrushing tends to have a softer finish than by hand. So I like using the airbrush to work quickly to a midtone and then going in by hand and working my way up from there. My next highlight will be with blue green which is just a step above in value from the aquatic turquoise. And I'll start to work in the highlights on the raised muscles. From there, I'll start mixing in progressive amounts of pastel yellow into the blue green, and I'll continue to highlight the muscles up. Here, I'm targeting the upper part of the torso. So we're looking at the collarbone, the neck, the shoulders, the arms. As I work my way down to the model, the abdomen, in particular the abs, don't get as bright because of how hunched over the model is. 
but you do get highlights on the tops of the thighs. And then because of the forward motion, you're also going to get some fairly strong highlights on the backs of the shoulders as well. And then finally, I'm going to go in with some glazes of light Prussian blue. So this is diluted to a mix of about five parts water to one part paint. And with the airbrush, I'm just going to be glazing in an almost watercolor consistency of this mix. I'm using the airbrush to apply a very thin layer, and then I'm air drying each step before applying another thin coat. Effectively, we're using the airbrush to glaze. You can do this by hand. You get more accuracy, but it requires better brush control because you need to be able to smooth out each coat and it does take longer for each layer to dry. To base coat the skin, I'm going to start with Scale Colors African Shadow. I'm going to apply a base coat over all of the face. Get right up into the collar, leaving some of that blue black line showing, and then cover the seams of the hair. From there, my first highlight will be with AK Base Flush, and we're just going to base coat all of the skin again, leaving just the deepest recesses in the African Shadow layer. So we're looking at the creases of the lips, eyes, and the jowl lines. I'm going to start mixing in progressive amounts of beige red into the base flush to form my highlights. I'm going to start with some very broad highlights targeting the various muscle groups and um, structures of the face. And then we're going to continue highlighting up through to pure beige red. And as we continue highlighting up, We'll look more and more at focusing the highlights on bringing out certain facial features like the pronounced cheekbones. We're looking at the nostrils, the tip of the nose, and the upper lips. You can see I'm just continuing to work up into almost pure pastel yellow, but not quite the, the purest color. You still want a bit of that beige red in the mix. As your highlights go up, you can see that I'm focusing a lot more on smaller areas of the face, accentuating details again, like the chin, the upper and lower lip, the nose and nostrils, and the forehead. From there, I'll take a diluted glaze of violet red, and I'm gonna target the mid and shadow tones. We're looking at the temple, where the ears and the cheek meet, the insides of the cheek, as well as the back of the neck, and the underside of the chin. I think the eyes, I'm using tenebrous gray and white sands, effectively an off black and an off white. I'll use my tenebrous gray first to black line the full eye socket, being as neat as possible, although we will correct afterwards with our various flesh tone mixes. From there, I'll use white sands to do a black dot for the actual eyeball. I'm gonna be as careful as I can, but you can see I do make a mistake. The paint's diluted enough that I can correct by using a damp brush to remove as much as possible. And then I'll go back in with tenebrous gray, I'll dot the pupil, and then correct any black lining as necessary. To paint the white markings of the suit, I'm gonna start with a base coat of medium sea gray. We're looking at doing the hands, the boots, and then he has his belt and sash that runs around the torso, as well as the hair. From there, we're gonna highlight up through warm gray. I'm not gonna do any intermediate steps. I'm just gonna dilute the color and apply a few glazes to smooth out the transitions and build the color up. From warm gray, I'm gonna start working my way into pure pale sand. From here, I do wanna start mixing a few transition steps. Pure pale sand is a little too bright. You wanna make sure that you have those mixes to prevent any chalkiness and to build up your color smoothly. And then our final highlight will be with pure white. And from here, I'm just targeting the upper parts of the torso, the gloves, and the hair. Finally, I'm gonna apply a final nuance with some Games Workshop Druchi Violet. This is loaded straight into the airbrush with a few drops of Flow Improver. I'm targeting specifically the skin and the blue parts of the suit. If it oversprays onto the white, it's not a big deal, but I'm gonna avoid spraying too heavily into the white portions. And then finally, to do the posters, we're going to use some tweezers and some PVA glue. I'm using Mod Podge for this because it dries a little clearer and without that film that PVA sometimes has. You want to pre-shape the poster using your tweezers and then glue it onto the base with some of your Mod Podge. 
Once you're happy with the positioning and the motion, you go back in with some Mod Podge and apply a few coats to the paper. This will help to seal the paper from moisture and also lock it into its shape. Once the posters are done and the PVA is fully dried, I'm going to apply some weathering powders to the base. This is a 50-50 mix of dark yellow ochre and burnt umber, something I use on all of my Marvel models to unify the entire collection and have some common colors. It's a great way to introduce a common element or a common color, even though all the models on top have very unique and very different color palettes. By using the same colors on things like the base stone, the terracotta, and the khaki, and introducing even just a soft, that sort of um, medium rusty ochre color for the pigments helps to create a unifying color scheme and a palette that's consistent over the entire collection. This way I can mix and match models no matter which affiliation they belong to, and everything fits together because the basing is so unified. Once I'm happy with the effect, I'm gonna use some mineral spirits to saturate the base. This will help to fix the powders, and protect it from gameplay. Once the model is done and the mineral spirits have evaporated, I will paint the base trim black and apply a coat of matte varnish to protect the model from gameplay. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe for more awesome weekly content. And if you want to check out my other social media platforms, I'll have links in the video description below. As always, until next time, thanks for watching and happy hobbying.